All right, so here are a few limits involving L'Hopital's rule. Now, a uh, couple of basic things to keep in mind when you're using L'Hopital's rule. Um, pitfalls, if you like, that you want to avoid. One is that L'Hopital's rule is not telling you to do the quotient rule, right? It's not saying take the derivative of this whole thing. It says replace this by the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. So be careful about that. Uh, the next thing to be careful about, make sure that you are actually confirming that you have a limit of the appropriate type, right? We're looking for either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. If we don't have the right type of limit, we can't use L'Hopital's rule, right? So, you know, if I, if I give you something like the limit as, as x approaches 1 of like x squared minus 3 over, over x squared plus, plus 2x, and you said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. Um, well, one, I mean, that would be kind of silly. You could just plug it in, right? You, you know that you plug that in. 1, one squared minus 3 is... So this is, this is minus 2 over, over 3, right? You can just do direct substitution. There's no reason to use L'Hopital's rule. Um, but if you did use L'Hopital's rule, you would get the wrong answer, right? Because the derivative of the top is, is 2x. The derivative of the bottom is, is 2x plus 2. And if you use L'Hopital's rule here and you plug in the number, right, you're going to get uh, 2 over, over 4. You get 1 half, right? The answer is not a half. It's minus 2 over 3. Um, so don't go blindly applying L'Hopital's rule, right? And so when you are using L'Hopital's rule, it's a good idea in that first step when you're, you're writing that first equal sign or just underneath, maybe you kind of go underneath and you say, hey, look, this is, this is indeed a 0 over 0 limit, right? So we confirm it's 0 over 0, and we might also say something like, maybe H, or I think the textbook says LHR for L'Hopital's rule, above the equal sign, okay? Make sure that anyone reading your work knows that, yes, you are using L'Hopital's rule here, just in case, you know, you're doing this out of context and, and they're not expecting it. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule says take the derivative of the top, divide by the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of the bottom is 1, right? So we let x go to 0, we get cosine of 0 over 1, cosine of 0 is 1, and we get 1. Okay, isn't that nice? Compare that to the amount of work we had to do to evaluate that limit way back in chapter 1. Remember we had to go through the whole geometric argument and squeeze theorem and all of that. L'Hopital's rule gets it to you in one line. Okay, come over to this one. Again, very first thing we need to check is do we have... 0 over 0 limit. So if we put x equal to 1, uh, we get 1 plus 3, 4. Square root of 4 is 2 minus 2, so we definitely have 0 on the top. 1 minus 1, yes, okay, so it's 0 over 0. Having confirmed that it's 0 over 0, we can proceed. So using L'Hopital's rule, we get the limit x approaching 1. So on the top, we have one half x plus three to the minus one half. On the bottom, the derivative is just minus one. Okay, maybe we want to clean that up before we evaluate. So this is going to be the limit x going to one of minus one over two square root x plus three. And we can now do this by direct substitution, right? So we put x equal to 1, and we get minus 1 over 4, right? Square root of 2 gives, square root of 4 gives 2, times 2 is 4, minus 1 on top. And again, we have it. Okay, so you do have to take the derivative of a square root, which is a little bit of work, but compared to having to rationalize, I think most people probably find this preferable. Okay, coming up here for the next one. Certainly we get 0 on the top when we put x equals 0 on the bottom, cosine of 0 is 1. So yes, we do have a 0 over 0 limit. So we go ahead and we apply L'Hopital's rule. We have the limit as x goes to 0, 2x over. So 
Derivative of negative cos is plus sine. Okay. And now you, you have a choice, right? I mean, we already know that the limit as x goes to 0 of x over sine x is, is 1, right? I mean, we did it for sine x over x here, and if you take the reciprocal, you get 1 over 1, still 1. So we know the limit is 2. Um, if you really want to, you could say, hey, this is still a 0 over 0 limit, and use L'Hopital's rule one more time. get 2 over cos x, and so we get 2 over cos 1, so we get 2. All right. Now, of course, if you already knew the answer was 2 here, there's no reason to do the extra L'Hopital's rule step. You could have stopped there and, and done the answer, but yeah, it's up to you. Right? Okay, one last example. We're blowing through these fairly quickly. I think we can do it all in one video. Let's check. Is it 0 over 0? Now we've got to evaluate, right? So 4 plus 2 minus 6, yes. 4 minus 6 plus 2, yes. So it is 0 over 0. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. So we get the limit, x going to 2, 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 3, right? And now we evaluate. This is not a 0 over 0 limit anymore, so we don't get to use L'Hopital's rule again. All we can do at this point is plug things in. So 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3 is 1. 5 over 1, we get a limit of 5.